Hey guys, <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit about the um, connecting rod bearings. Let me get this camera up a little higher. The connecting rod bearings, okay, on an engine. Now, this is the bearing that came out of this connecting rod. This is the number one rod. Now, when you look at this, if you look at the edge of this, you'll see there's a little tab right here. And that tab, when it's set into place, there's a, no, an opening for it on the connecting rod. When that's put into place, okay, like that, that little tab stops the, the bearing from spinning on the connecting rod. And the cap has the same thing. Okay, there's a tab there and this tang. And when you put that together, you put that together, and you put them on top of the uh, connecting rod. When we join those, you notice that this one's on the opposite side, this tab. So what happens is that stops the bearing from moving. Now because oil comes through the crankshaft, there's a hole in the crankshaft, it oils the inner part of the bearing. So when you take this apart, what you want to look at, you're concerned mainly with the interior part of the bearing, the inside here, of both bearings, but what you want to look at, <coughs> you want to look at the bearing itself. Now I don't know if you can see that, but this says that it's a standard bearing, STD, and then there's a number and an FM. Now I, at this point I have no idea whether this is a bearing from Chevy or if it came with it as a factory component or not. I don't know. I have no idea. So I have to measure all this stuff. When you look at the inside of this, you'll notice there's some shiny spots there's there's some little bit of scratching like um, let's see if I can point this out you, you can you might be able to see it right there some little bit of scratching but since this guy drove this truck up to Canada since I know that he's had it I don't believe that this bearing was wrapping I believe that it might have had dirty oil in it and maybe that's where the scratching came from <clears throat> that's on the this is the, from the cap. But what you're after is you want to look and see that there's no elongated with the bearing scratches that would indicate that the bearing has spun, you know, spun inside of the rod. Because if it did, then the heat that's created between the rod and the bearing will cause it to melt or deteriorate. And then that causes problems with the crankshaft. So that's the one thing you want to look at and you want to look and see if it's an undersized bearing it'll be a number here like 0 .02 or, or 0 .002, 0 .001 or something that'll tell you that it's a, it's a different size bearing rather than standard that'll tell you whether the motor was rebuilt before or not if the motor was rebuilt before you may or may not want to continue because it depends on who did it you don't you'd have to measure every journal and every rod to find out if anything was changed, which I'm going to do anyway, but I'm just saying that's something that might want to keep a novice from rebuilding a motor. And I'm not talking about rebuilding motors that have already fallen apart or blew apart. I'm talking about motors that have a lot of service life on them. In other words, if you have 180,000, 200,000 miles on a motor, I'm talking about resurfacing them, refurbishing them to be able to you know, last for another 100,000 miles. So anyway, that's what that bearing looks like, and those are the problems that you can ac that occur if the bearing spins. Now, there's some discoloration in here, but it's not blue. You normally will get like a dark blue that metal turns, or a bluish color, which indicate heat, a heat problem. I don't see that. I just see black stains, probably from the motor oil. That's in the rod cap. Okay, so again, there's nothing on the back of this. So I'm going to look on the inside of this, and again, there's really mic microscopic scratches that lengthwise, which something that small isn't really going to matter. Although, you, I'll be measuring this. I'm going to clean these bearings up. I'm going to put them back in the engine and see what kind of clearance there was. And I'll show you how I do that. But this is what you want to look at. If, you, if there was any imperfections at all you know, on the inside face, of the bearing, the rod bearing, then that's a problem. 
I mean anything at all can cause problems and if there is any kind of a problem you probably have to regrind the crank and get new rods and new bearings so you know there's a lot of ifs when you're taking a motor apart so I'm at about five minutes and I don't want to go too long with this video but that's something you want to look at as, as well when you're taking the rods apart very important that you have a good eye you keep things clean and um, you know you look closely and try to read what has happened the other thing that I wanted to show you is if you notice there's a rubber uh, hose on here the other day I was saying that when you take the uh, rods out you don't want to just take them out and leave these bolts scratch against the connecting rod or I mean against the crankshaft <clears throat> what you want to do is after you take the nuts off and you pull the top cap off the piston will be held in the cylinder with the rings so you, t you turn the crank a little bit very gently turn the crank away from anything that this could hit and then immediately put these rubber hoses on top of these bolts to stop the scratching of the crankshaft with these bolts believe me if you scratch the crankshaft you're gonna you, just the smallest of scratches okay if it's I'm not talking about this microscopic stuff that you can't feel or barely see I'm talking about if you scratch that thing or you put a ding a ding in it a little ding you may as well throw the motor away or you're going to spend a lot of money to have the crankshaft machine down to match the bearings to it and everything else so it's up to you how you do it I'm just saying that's the problem you have so if you put these rubber hoses on top of one on each thing on each bolt and then use a wooden hammer or a wooden stick or something or a dowel to drive this out um, of the cylinder you're going to be in good shape that way so um, like I say I have the rings off of this and I'll show you how to do that and how to put them back on later on so that's it for today how far I wanted to go I just wanted you to know a little bit more about that and um, if you noticed I started to clean these up a little bit and if you look at the side of that I don't know if you can see it real well in there you'll notice there's like a little discoloration here when the pistons are going up and down in the motor they sort of slap on each side now if the, it's discoloration color like you can see just a little bit shinier than that is but there's if you look real close and I know you can't see it in the camera you'll actually see there's machine marks that go sideways on here that are you know the same distance apart and all on both sides if you can see those and all you have is a little bit of discoloration chances are at that point that the piston may still be good okay so what we'll do is we'll put this in later and put a feeler gauge between it and the cylinder to check for a gap uh, how big the gap is you're only allowed a thousandths I believe and also we can measure this with a micrometer the outside of this and then I can measure the cylinder to see what that looks like alright so that's it for now I'll talk to you again later thanks bye